If you've ever seen more than one species of plant, you'll probably agree with me that they can look quite different from one another. There are around 400,000 species of plants we can find on Earth. And these plants differ not only in the way they look, but also in the way they're rooted in the ground, the reproductive cycle, or even the way they transport water in their bodies. To organize and group these different types of plants, we use a system called classification. We classify plants into groups. Each group has a set of characteristics that apply to all members within that group. The majority of these characteristics are observable, so after watching this video, you'll be able to classify plants yourself. The major divisions of plants are a result of their evolution over hundreds of millions of years. And keeping this evolution in the back of your mind will help you understand why we classify the plants the way we do and how these categories originated. Let's go way back to around 2.5 billion years ago. Before there were any plants, there were cyanobacteria, which perform photosynthesis and as a byproduct produce oxygen. In fact, they were the first organisms on Earth that started releasing oxygen into the atmosphere. However, cyanobacteria are not classified as plants, and even though they're green, they don't really resemble plants. And that's assuming you can even see them in the first place, since they're microscopic in size. What came after cyanobacteria are algae, which are organisms that look much more like plants. Algae are a very diverse group of organisms that can be found on land, in fresh water, and in marine environments, and include the seaweeds. We distinguish three groups, the evolutionarily older brown and red algae, and the younger green algae. Even though some species look quite plant-like, with blades that look like leaves, and hold fats that might remind you of roots, they are technically not plants, but they are important for our story, because it's believed the true plants share a common ancestor with green algae, specifically the order Choralis, the stonewords. So from green algae, we finally arrived to the true plants. Let's look at how we classify them. Land plants, or the Embryophyta, are traditionally divided into four groups. The oldest group, which evolved some 470 million years ago, are the Bryophytes. Bryophytes consist of mosses, liverworts, and hornworts. They tend to grow in moist habitats, although they are not limited to them. Different types of bryophytes often grow together, as seen on this slope covered in different species of mosses and liverworts. They lack roots and instead are anchored to surfaces by fibrous rhizoids. This enables them to occupy habitats where plants with true roots cannot grow, so you can find bryophytes growing on roofs, rocks and other surfaces without soil. Their size is limited by an absence of vascular tissues, which conduct water and nutrients in plant bodies. For this reason, we call them non-vascular plants. You'll also be unsuccessful in finding any flowers, fruits or seeds on bryophytes. Even though they can reproduce sexually, they do so by spores. You can actually often see spore capsules on mosses. They look like antennae sticking out of the moss plant. I made a video focused on bryophyte life cycle, where I explain all the details. You can watch it by clicking here, and I'll also share the link in the description below. It's also important to note that bryophytes are dependent on water for their reproduction, as the sperm reaches the egg through water droplets. Going forward with our groupings, all the rest of our land plants have vascular tissues. We call them vascular plants. Pteridophytes are the group to which ferns and lycophytes belong. You might be less familiar with lycophytes. Their members are commonly called club mosses, spike mosses and quillworts, so maybe these terms will ring a bell. To give you an idea, one of the genera belonging to spike mosses is the widely distributed Selaginella. And I probably don't have to introduce you to ferns. Their bodies have clearly recognizable roots, stems and true leaves or fronds. Also, they can grow taller than bryophytes, thanks to the presence of vascular tissues. However, pteridophytes still lack flowers and seeds, and similarly to bryophytes, they reproduce via spores. You might have seen the sporangia with spores on the underside of fern leaves. They look like little brown blobs. I'm curious to know if you've ever noticed them, 
Let me know in the comments below. About 350 million years ago, the seed plants first appeared. Production of seeds is a critical feature that brings plants many advantages. Also, the evolution of pollen at this point means that sperm can be transported to eggs within pollen grains by wind or pollinators, thus plants that produce pollen do not rely on water for their reproduction. The first group of seed plants are the gymnosperms. Gymnosperms include conifers, cycads, ginkophytes and cnidophytes. You're all probably familiar with various coniferous trees, and ginkgo biloba, the only species in the phylum Ginkophyta, is also pretty well known. Cycads are tropical plants that look a lot like palms, and gnidophytes include three existing genera, ephedra, the very unusual looking velvichia, and gnidum. I think it's fascinating to see these genera that are closely related, but look wildly different, but maybe that's a topic for a separate video. Gymnosperms have naked seeds, which means that their ovules are partially exposed during development, often inside a cone. Look at this cycad, this pine tree and this ephedra. They all have cone structures. If you want to know more about gymnosperm life cycle, I made a video about pine reproduction, which you can see right here. The evolutionarily youngest group are the seed plants with enclosed seeds meaning the ovules are protected during development and their seeds are enclosed in a fruit. Those are flowering plants, the angiosperms. Fruit is not the only distinctive feature of angiosperms, but as the name flowering plants suggests, they bear flowers. I don't think there is any need to give you examples of flowering plants, as with their diversity and abundance, they make up 90% of all land plants. To conclude, land plants or embryophytes are traditionally divided into four groups. These four groups are themselves divided into vascular and non-vascular plants. Non-vascular plants consist of the bryophytes, while vascular plants embody pteridophytes, gymnosperms and angiosperms. Gymnosperms and angiosperms are characterized by having seeds and are often referred to as seed plants. Angiosperms, the largest group of plants, bear flowers and are known as flowering plants. I hope this explanation was helpful for you, and if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. If you like my content, please support me by subscribing to my channel, so I can keep creating more educational videos for you. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next week.